Welcome to another episode of Morning Meds, FamityFamily.com's devotional spot for meals to meditate on Yahweh's word for good success. And today we are on the general topic of love and we are on the title of sharing with all. And we are looking at this from Isaiah 15, uh, sorry, Isaiah 1 verse 15 to 18. We're grateful for your attention today. Yesterday, we went through again the topic of love from 1 Timothy 5, verse 11 to 19, on the title, Sharing Generously. How we deal with widows, how we, how we are to be responsible in giving to elders that are word, working hard sharing the word of God and share, teaching people in the ways of Christ and how we are to be responsible in helping widows and to make sure that we are managing the family resources or the church resources in an effective way, but at the same time, we are still generous in sharing. Today, we are continuing on the topic of love and sharing and love in the, the modern church was in the original church was seen as something that was very tangible. People didn't just say they loved people and left them in need, but they physically helped them. They gave financially to people who they loved. And we are seeing love as more than an emotional word that we get butterflies about someone. We feel concerned and do nothing. That's not the concept of love. Here, we're going to read from Isaiah 1, verses 15 to 18. I might read from 13 to 18 today, and then we'll go through this. We're reading from the King, the Good News Translations translation, and then we'll read from the New Century Translation because they're a little bit easier to read. Now, Isaiah 1, 13 to 18, Good News says, It's useless to bring your offerings. I am disgusted with the smell of, your inc of the incense you burn. I cannot stand your new moon festivals, your sabbaths, and your religious gatherings. They are all corrupted by your sins. I hate your new moon festivals and holy days. They are a burden that I am tired of hearing, of bearing. When you lift your hands in prayer, I will not look at you. No matter how much you pray, I will not listen. For your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves clean. Stop all this evil that I see you doing. Yes, stop doing evil and learn to do right and defend widows. Verse 18. The Lord says, Now let's settle the matter. You are stained red with sin, but I will wash you as clean as snow. Although your stains are deep red, you will be as white as wool. The New Century Version says, for Isaiah 1, 13 to 18, Don't continue bringing me worthless sacrifices. I hate the incense you burn. I can't stand your new moons, Sabbaths, and other feast days. I can't stand the evil you do in your holy meetings. I hate your new moon feasts and your other yearly feasts. They have become a heavy weight on me, and I'm tired of carrying it. When you raise your arms to me in prayer, I will refuse to look at you. Even, though you. even if you say many prayers, I will not listen to you, because your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Stop doing the evil things I see you do. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Punish those who hurt others. Help the orphans. Stand up for the rights of widows. Verse 18. The Lord says, Come, let us talk about these things. Though your sins are like scarlet, they can be as white as snow. Though your sins are deep red, they can be white like wool. So that's Isaiah 1, 15 to 18. And here we hear Isaiah who is a prophet that speaks, he is very well connected. He is speaking to Israel about the, a lot of judgment 
he starts out very heavy in judgment, but he ends with some consolation, telling them that there's going to be a Messiah that is going to um, promote transformation in Israel. He's going to reunite Israel, and it, they're going to have uh, good times, but they're going to have to repent. And he is, uh, he, you know, anybody who talks about repentance, the leadership tends to get rid of them. They did it to Christ, they did it to John the Baptist, did it to Isaiah. It is said in the Talmud, I understand, that Isaiah was sawn in half by, I believe, Manasseh, one of the kings that were, wasn't very, one of the kings of Israel that wasn't very happy with him being, being confrontational with them. But here, Yahweh is fed up with Judah's continued evil doing. Yahweh does not like what, and remember here, Judah is talking about the southern element of the United Tribes of Israel. Um, and Judah is, con Judah is continuing to do evil, but they are also having a charade of religious traditions. They are doing festivals for New Moon. We know that there are about nine or so festivals that Moses mandated that they do as part of the, the, the fellowship of their fellowship with Yahweh, but those ceremonies followed sanctification. They were supposed to live a clean life, and then those ceremonies, the Sabbath ceremony, the new moon, the trumpets, the Passover, all these ceremonies were supposed to be um, the, the manifestation of them living a clean life. You are supposed to live clean, and then you're supposed to be a clean person, ritually clean and then you engage in these sacrifices but they were engaging in these sacrifices and they're essentially in the religious ceremonies holidays and they were not living a holy life they were not living a life that represents yahweh yahweh says he hates false worship worship is a form false worship is a form of mockery to attempt to worship yahweh in form and not in life not in passion, not in dreams, not in motivation. The key verses in verses 16 to 17 says that for true worship, and here the word worship is to reverence God, to respect him, and to imitate him in essence, to bow yourself down before him. But when you worship someone, you imitate them. You seek to be like them. You seek to represent them. I remember back in the day, People would worship, when you, you have a particular celebrity that you worship, you dress like them, you speak like them, your mannerism becomes like them. You essentially take on the form of that person that you worship. And there is a book in Second Corinthians, there's a verse, Second Corinthians 3 verse 18 says that whatever you worship, you will take on the form of, that, of what you worship. The Tanakh said that, which is the Hebrew Old Testament, says that the Jews, they worship a golden bull and they became like animals. Um, so, verse 16 to 17 says, For true worship we should, one, wash ourselves. Yahweh is not dirty, so we should not be dirty. We should not be mixed with sin. Two, repent and turn from evil. Yahweh does not do evil, so if we are worshiping Yahweh, we cannot worship Yahweh and do evil. Three, Learn to do well. No, Yahweh doesn't need to learn to do well. But we have to know, learn, because we learned evil. We have to learn to do well. We have to know, unlearn evil, which is turn away from evil and learn to do well. Four, we must seek fairness by taking care of the underdogs, vulnerable people of the society, the widows, the orphans. Verse 18 says, the Lord will forgive the most abominable sins. In the Old Testament, salvation was very works-based. And Yahweh's presence was reserved for the holy, those who are clean, those who have not stained themselves with sin. Now, in the Christian element of the Holy Bible, the Yahweh is this Makadeshkem, the sanctifier. He is the garbage man. He is the one who cleans us. And he is the Sid Kenu, they say, the one who makes us acceptable, makes us the Christianese righteous. And that is expressed more manifestly to cleanse us, to make us right, rather than us 
having to strive under the Mosaic law. And we know the Mosaic law wasn't meant for us Gentiles, if you want to call us that, who those who aren't offended by that term, non-Jewish people. No, we simply believe and keep believing in Christ's equipping power to enable that we live in balance with heaven. But Christ very clearly says that our faith must be expressed in acts of sacrifice and sharing without seeking compensation. And you can see Luke 14, 12 to 14. Isaiah 1, 16 to 17 says, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow.